All right, we're back for round number three of Modern Mondays at Guardian Games. We have a not mirror mirror matchup between Andrew Keefe on Mardu Death Shadow and Connor Ra on Grixis Death Shadow. So Ooh. we have white versus blue here. I know that this uh, Mardu Death Shadow deck has been popular of late. Um, I think mostly in response to Hogak. Uh, Path to Exile being a premier removal spell against Hogak. Path, Dreadhorde Arcanist Path, is that a thing that they do? I haven't seen Arcanist in this list. Um, from an optic standpoint, I feel like I would prefer to be on the Grixis list in this matchup. I think uh, access to Stubborn Denial is a pretty big deal. So we've got an Unearth there. Yeah, Unearth and lands, and the Fatal Push gets taken by Connor. Dracula letting us know that Arcanists are not, not, not the hot stuff in Modern Shadow anymore. But you can still play them in the Ball Lightning Tribal deck, so that's what matters. Yep, you can play it there. We have a player that's um, breaking out some Delvers. I believe playing some sort of is it, some sort of is it or three color Delver list that's trying to Arcanist some people this evening. So does Mardu get you? Is it just for Paths and Grave Hate? Does it get some other? Oh, Tide Hollow Scholar. That's a cool card. SK Hedges telling us that Tide Hollow Skuller is another white card that you can play, which is pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. It just seems like like Mardu Death Shadow is kind of a meta, a, a very much meta deck. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think Grixis Death Shadow is the far more powerful list. That makes sense. Um, so I think personally, I, I definitely am putting my money on Grixis here. Right, because if he, you just get, when you skull or someone who has a bunch of removal in their hand, it doesn't feel too great. Mardu does get, um, oh, the new knight that lets you tutor up a one drop that I can't remember the name of. <laughs> Yaven rooting for Mardu, despite uh, not knowing what the, what the story is. I think that's fair. You pick your favorites based on emotions. It's the way to go. Ranger Vios. Thanks, chat. Yeah, so Ranger Vios and Unearth together is a really, really strong value engine. Um, I think it can be sometimes like a best case scenario sort of deal if it actually if it actually gets online. Ranger Captain, there we go. Yeah, Ranger Vios is the four mana one that gets two creatures. Um, Ranger Captain, the most recent Modern Horizons printing that gets you one, 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 and can sack two silence your opponent for non-creature spells so what's the what's the death shadow mirror like how do you play this match so uh up front this is not a match that i have played so i'm not yeah, particularly give us, give used us some, to these decks. some wild speculation um but i think the main intrigue here is who can stick a threat because there's a lot of one for one trading that goes on in these death shadow matchups they play out kind of like Delver decks do in Legacy where they're just trying to trade off cards and be the last deck with a big threat in play. So to me, it's a lot about threat management because um, especially the Grixis Death Shadow deck plays relatively few threats. Connor leveling a bolt at the Tide Hollow Sculler. Going to grab that Fatal Push back. End of turn. 
Andrew's got to really think here whether he wants to blow this uh, Nile spell bomb. I would 100% blow this thing up before Connor gets a chance to go to main phase. Um, it's a very real scenario where Connor could either get value out of a Snapcaster after playing a land or could uh, play um, the Zombie Fish. Or the Banana Man. Or Tassiger. In so this case. I, I do think Andrew missed a, an opportunity there to really keep Connor off of the threat. Yeah, getting seeing a big Delph threat has got to feel bad after you coulda, coulda, woulda, shoulda cleared out their graveyard. Especially given that Andrew did, does not have a lot of action in hand. Last time we saw, he had Unearth and mostly lands. It just seems like... It, I, I understand that it's possible that he didn't want to draw the card so that he didn't wouldn't give Connor the opportunity to, to hit something good with a discard spell. Um, so I know that he's working with some... You know, some kind of difficult, difficult and, decisions and here. And Connor did just bin a discard spell uh, from his faithful suiting because, you know. Okay, so, so we get an would have had T spell bomb. This is going to keep the Tassiger from getting any immediate value. I mean, you have to get four mana and, and path the Tassiger. Okay. The answer, okay. So. Well, there you go. So Andrew's line makes makes a degree of sense in this light. I mean, he top decked the path, so. Right. But. <laughs> I like the, the lively discussion we're getting in chat here. Everyone in chat seems to actually play all the decks that are on camera on like us. So this <laughs> is good. We get, we get all the, uh, the details filled oh, in. Oh, chat's good at pretending, too. <laughs> <laughs> We get the unearth for the Tide Hollow Skuller. Connor with only one fetch in play. Looks like we're going to fetch in response to the Skuller trigger. Looks like our life totals are 17 to 9. And we're going to shock here. Leave down to seven. So is is Andrew still at seventeen? Is that right? That's what we have on Connor's on so Connor's gotta... life pad. So here's what's interesting about Tide Hollow Skuller has kind of the old templating for uh, ETB triggers with cards that, that grab cards from your opponent's hand. So Connor was debating: does he fire off a Fatal Push or something like that? towards the Skuller. However, because of the old templating, if Connor had chosen to fire off something like a push for the Tide Hollow Skuller, the Skuller would leave the battlefield and it would still have the trigger of being able to take a card from Connor's hand. So it would both get to take a card from Connor's hand and Connor would not be able to get that card back. And if he takes a card other than push, Connor can just push it. So I wonder what he's... Yeah, that's extremely surprising to me that we He's went for snapcaster over push but maybe we've got maybe there's something that we're unaware of especially because connor doesn't i mean connor doesn't have any removal spells in graveyard to toss out i mean you're preventing Thought Scour, Snap Thought Scour, which seems okay, but that's going to be enabled at EOT. Ah, okay. So, all right, then we, we 100% have, have the Andrew's life totals are way life wrong. Life total, yeah. incorrect. Which means that maybe Connor also has the life totals incorrect. So we see the pat, but again, this this line is also confusing to me because. Andrew's just leaving Connor with snap push, right? So it looks like we have Andrew at 12. Of the nine. Wow, the bold, the bold bolt of the Death Shadow. I mean, Andrew's got no cards in hand, so 
suppose it's relatively free. I'll be interested to see how many um, fiery islets Connor is running in his build of the deck. I do think that was that was kind of quietly a very big upgrade for uh, all mm -hmm. of these Death Shadow decks, where the Horizon lands in so in another, various another way colors. to flexibly hurt yourself and draw cards. Um, always good. Looks like Connor's fetching the six here. Thought sees forces the issue of playing out the Snapcaster now. Right. I imagine you just fire off the snap and you sit on Thought Scour uh, until after the Thought Seize resolves. But sometimes you just go you go face. And Thoughtseize puts Andrew to seven. And that's kind of the punish if you go Connor's line and bolt face. I. I think it, it's always a delicate proposition to think that you can kind of with very little cards in hand race race your opponent I think I would have tried to grind out more card advantage I just think that's that the MO like of this Grixis Death Shadow deck is to just to just out card advantage your opponent because your your deck really does I mean Mardu grinds well too but I especially like Grixis when it's ahead. Uh, but Andrew does take game one, even given that I felt like he had a lot less cards to work with. But when you're both when you're both down to top decking and you've both you know gotten yourselves down to a handful of life because you're a Death Shadow deck. It doesn't take very much top deck to just win. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. It felt like Connor had a ton of two for ones and was way ahead in cards, and then all of a sudden they were both top decking. I suppose Connor flooded out a bit more than Andrew did, and Andrew, uh, with the silent clearings, was able to kind of cash in for some real value. Um, So players deciding what comes out here. I it'd be interesting to see what t chat says. I'm of the opinion that Team or Battle Rage is a fairly clear cut um, in these decks post board. As I think again, it's a lot about one for oneing, and I think getting two for one on yeah, it is just too bad. Allowing your the possibility of of getting two for one when you're trying to TBR is just not worth it. And I think both decks are going to try and move a little bit slower and play even more of a grindy of a grindy game post board. Yeah, chat saying cut the discard. That's one of those kind of heuristics that I that I um hear for a lot of these decks that end up in top deck wars. It's kind of like a Jun heuristic too is to like cut the discard. Um I actually think that it's it's possible that it's a bit overblown and that occasionally um, your discard hitting their threat can actually be really good, but I do understand that, you know, you do get in situations later in the game where discard is it's just a terrible thing to top deck like a discard spell when your opponent's able to top deck a threat. A threat. Vibe pizza hedging their bets. Don't cut. Don't cut all. Just, just trim. Just trim. I don't know if there are any specific silver bullets that would be great in the matchups from either of these decks. Do they have more spot removal in the board? 
or do they usually all of their removal is main deck? I, I don't know what a, I what a death shadow sideboard normally looks like. That they're playing some amount of additional spot removal. Let's take a look at one of the recent. So uh, K Command for the Mardu deck and the Grixis deck actually seems uh, definitely worth it. Uh, the ability to just draw step, fire off a K command, make your opponent discard, grab a creature back seems great. Um, getting an ally of Zendikar, a possibility from the Mardu list, I think worth bringing in. Um, Lily of the Veil also seems decent to me. And Celestial Purge is super solid here from the Mardu side of things. Um, Grixis has been a bit on the out, so it looks like also K Command. I think you could consider Jace Friend's Prodigy. Mm, that's about it. I don't really like what I'm seeing much from the sideboard for Grixis in this matchup. Dracula is saying Lily lets. I suppose Lily's minus. I was thinking of Lily's plus mostly, which seems very medium, but Lily's minus actually is quite good. Um, being able to pay three to get a creature back, and then, you know, the upside of them having to get it off the board or being able to get more creatures does seem solid. Um, if I'm Andrew, I definitely keep in my Nile Spell Bombs. I think Nile Spell Bomb is uh, one of my favorite ways to come back, kind of. Uh, the graveyard heavy meta that modern has become it's not generally fast enough to deal with Hogak but against some of these grindier value decks it's great since I've been a I've been talking about fun each each match here uh, my, uh, my my fun comment for death shadow is that losing to death shadow I've always found really fun, even even when I get crushed, just because the fact that they hurt themselves. It always feels like they're on a razor's edge and have to play really well to beat you. Even if that's not, not necessarily true, they might just crush you and you just don't realize how in control they were. But but I, I feel like it just the deck makes for fun games every time, which is kind of cool, um, whether you're playing it or you're playing against it. Um, and there's a lot of decks that are fun to play and not fun to play against. But yeah, I think it's cool that Death Shadow creates fun games a lot of times just because of the way they play with their life total. Hmm. Well, when I play against Death Shadow with Amulet Titan decks, I get everything stripped from my hand and then I just watch as I die while I play land, so it's usually not terribly fun for me. Well, but, okay. But I, I stand corrected. I can understand I can understand your sentiment in a lot of decks and I could see combo decks where you don't care about their life total and then it's it it takes away the what makes it fun for a lot of other decks to play against. Yeah, it's a it's a a, br a brand of magic that I am a big fan of, even if I myself don't play much of it. Look at a little fetch shock action here for Andrew. I know for a while it was kind of in vogue to choose to be on the draw in these various death shadow mirrors. Uh, I wonder if that's even, if that's like this still in vogue thing. It, it felt at the time that like it, 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 maybe it was just strictly wrong, but I, I do know there were some preeminent and very good death shadow players that were choosing to be on the draw. <laughs> Okay, the preemptive engineered explosives for three from Connor. That's uh, for the Kaya? I guess. That's a three drop, right? Yeah.
kind of a slow kind of a slow roll here to start this one just kind of easing ourselves into the mirror as uh as brendan and i were talking about these mirrors it does tend to get grindier so things slow down a bit players uh -huh. are trying to play bigger haymakers Oh. <laughs> oh, me thinks this is an interaction that Connor was not aware of. That is brutal. Oof. Brutal. Oof. Kai is one of those great cards that, when it first came out, a lot of people thought it was not so great because it's so odd and then people just keep finding little little great uses for it yeah it's very narrow but it turns out that it was not quite as narrow as yeah people right had exactly expected. i would take the liliana here <laughs> yes i think uh fulminator mage i mean it looks like connor is sitting on a stubborn denial, a TBR, and a banana banana guy. Tassiger in hand. The new Tassiger art doesn't have the fruit bowl, and that just seems like a real bummer. So I appreciate that people <laughs> are playing new, the old art. The new Tassiger art is extremely questionable. <laughs> I'm going to go on record and say that. <laughs> Yeah, this is looking bad for Connor. Anytime Ooh. you get in, in this one for one matchup, if you get hit if you get blown out in a situation like that where you, you like think you have something covered in an intelligent way right. and you just get reversed on you, because obviously that stubborn denial would have hit the would have hit the um Kaya as well. But yeah, that situation your house of cards can fall down very quickly and Connor basically without a threat at this point. Both players playing some discard spells, though. So here's the thing, though. Kaya's got some anti-synergy with your shadow plan in that I I believe it's a may for the life gain, but I'll have to check when you exile from your opponent's graveyard. Check out Kaya here. So it's not a May. So there's a way that exiling creatures can actually be problematic if you're playing this Death Shadow strategy with Kaya. Um, obviously, you could, you know, sometimes you're you're able to keep your life total down, especially if you've drawn silent clearings or various other lands that you can kind of continue to pressure your own life total with. And Kaya can actually keep you in that comfortable middle range. Um, but in a situation like this, it actually does have some some possible downside. But if you're just if you're trying to clear out cards because you're worried about Snapcaster Mage, you don't need to be exiling creatures anyway, so that's okay. True. Um, if you've exiled everything but the creatures, there's probably not enough creatures in the graveyard to be a significant delve threat. But yeah, that's a good. You gotta watch out for that. Gotta decide. Looks like we're gonna cast this for its full cost mm. and not pay any life here. Stubborn denial and TBR are still in hand. Goes for the TBR. Stubborn Denial is pretty easy to play around if uh, your opponent does not have Ferocious enabled. Get him for two. Tough to see life totals. And Andrew opts to cut Connor off red. Kind of interesting that we would go for 
you know, we would we would nab TBR from hand and then also cut Connor off red. Um, not saying it's wrong, but seems like it's it's possible that you could do one of the two and strand strand a card in hand. Chat's pointing out K Command is another red card he could top deck. Um, or bolt the scholar to stop the, the slow two two beats. Yeah, taking him off red makes sense to me. I might just leave the T B R in hand if I'm mm -hmm. if my plan is to take him off red. That that's seems sound. Are we going to get a Kaya ultimate kill? It seems, uh, seems like a, a very real possibility. Get the Snapcaster block. That's good. So, so this does free up the Tassiger, but Andrew knows about it, and he's got an active Kaya, so... Uh, and Connor's only sh sitting on two lands this game, so going to be tough to get enough cards in the yard to actually delve that. So that should come with the required two life gain because the creature was exiled. I'm not sure if players caught that. And it looks like that's not going to matter. Connor just running too low on resources. and I'm going to go ahead and say that was a Kaya ultimate kill. Yes. Even though it didn't actually happen. Yeah, and so that was Kaya getting in with the minus five, with the ultimate, and uh, taking Connor out of the game there. So contrary to what I thought going in, really expected Grixis Death Shadow to look like the stronger, more grindy deck in the matchup and was... It did not look like that in in uh in this particular setting. Well, we've got about 17 minutes left. We will um, venture forth and see if we can uh, find a backup match so that we can bring y'all an extra bonus round of of uh, some modern magic this Monday. So we will be back shortly. Mm -hmm.